wait, wait, what? John now? Legend's wife, that broad. Oh yeah, I'm aware yeah. of the broad. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know why. I just I'm so online, or I have been in the past. I saw that, and I was like, oh my god, Coh needs to hear. So she's giving it another go. Mm-hmm. A little redemption run. She's uh she's uh getting another round of drinks on the house. <laughs> Is this the broad that uh, took that photo of Mm -hmm. miscarriage where she was like posing for the camera? Yes, Mm -hmm. it is indeed. Wow. Yeah. Legend icon. Well, I mean, let's let's be honest here. This is a fake baby again. (laughs) Fake pregnancy. Publicity stunt. We all know she doesn't have a real womb in there. We all know she's male to female. It's actually (laughs) oh fuck. It's actually a false uh, pregnancy uh, brought about by a dose of Paxlovid. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're loading them up now. uh, John Legend is gay, right? So this is impossible, right? Yeah, he's FTM. He's and then she's MTF. So they're an inverse couple. <laughs> is that Beth, the 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 uh, physiognomy studier woman? Who, yeah, who Bevy, bro. Bevy, Bevy, one one two, dude. Be- <laughs> <laughs> Where would we be without Bevy? How would we know? We just oh, wouldn't man. know. We'd be lost in a world of illusion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what she said of uh, how she knows that uh, John Legend is a uh, is a uh, Female skull structure, dude. Oh, the skull structure. I mean, it's just a dead giveaway. (laughs) Well, and don't even get me started on the gate, the posture, the gate. Oh, the gate, dude. His Q angle is whack, bro. Yeah. I always mix her up with the alpha Revolino. Revolino, Yeah, but it's different science. Totally different. It's like chemistry and biology. It's different. Yeah, they're all using they're using angles and lines and it's actually hell. it's called phrenology, CRT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just I just randomly remembered way back when we did like a you know, I think it was a lib pandemic episode or or no no, the Captain Obvious episode or whatever where just a lull in the combo. I think COH was just like, yeah, Kyle Rittenhouse is, uh, he's clearly FDM. I mean, <laughs> you he like, hey, <laughs> down my mind, bro. I think I wasn't even there for that. The recording just picked it up. They're planting them <laughs> everywhere. Dude, you know, we've been at it for a while when like, I hear the phrase lid pandemic and I like feel nostalgic. Yeah. For real. <laughs> Dude, it's been for a real. while, man. Those were honestly, those were days of innocence. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Lid I, pandemic. Yeah. I don't even say it as much anymore now. Cause it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, it ran its course. I, the COVID ran its course. So it's like, you know, until they, until they bring it back, I'm just gonna, I don't want to jinx it. So, but, uh, but yeah, Chrissy Teigen. I guess we're doing the what's the deal with this broad segment very early. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) that's the opening segment tonight. (laughs) So she's she's pregnant again. Okay. well, good luck to her. Yeah, allegedly. Hope that works out. Um, But yeah, I guess that works out. (laughs) (laughs) What did he mean by that? (laughs) (laughs) I guess we got another uh, 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 broad that we have to figure out. What the deal of is Pelosi. Pelosi. This is at Trustworthy Slav. This is at Incognito, C-O-H. CRK, Black.com, build. This is the Fed Post. Broad. Yeah, she uh, apparently she's uh, off her meds flying to Taiwan. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I kept like seeing peripheral stuff about this. I didn't really know what was going on. Uh, people making memes about her as a witch flying to Taiwan because I think I think they called her a witch, the Chinese people. Uh, Wait, what? Like the mainland China people, or yeah, I think oh, they okay. called her an American witch or something. Which Fuck, yeah, being yeah. shit, yeah, Let go know. off. <laughs> um, but yeah, apparently she's going there, and I didn't know this until today because I didn't look into it. But apparently Brandon didn't even co-sign this. President Brandon said, uh, you know, he doesn't think that she should go. Wait, what? I had no idea. She's just going out there on her own accord. Yeah, I think she's all for meds or something. I think maybe she's just like confused. <laughs> I think. I think she's stepping on the wrong plane, honestly. I think it's kind of weird, though, right? I mean, it's weird that, that Biden would say don't go 
Isn't that weird? I don't know. I, I wasn't expecting that. Did I mean, Slav might that, know more about this. Do you say that in like in retrospect, like when asked about it? When I think this was leading up to it. He was just like, oh, I don't know what that bitch is doing. Why is she going over there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Bitches just be doing shit sometimes. <laughs> I don't fucking just be know. Tripping, dog. <laughs> he literally said, they literally asked him, what do you make of it? He's like, oh, I don't think it's a good idea. The generals say not to go. I mean, uh, well, I don't even know what's going on with all that. I, I don't know. I'm not updated on that. He's like literally just like. Yeah, add it to the list of shit you're not updated on. Don't know what's going on about. <laughs> Joe's on a on a need to know basis with with everything. <laughs> yeah, but, they're keeping uh, a lid on his info. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't Slava, even know, you know how this is. This I'm brand. literally looking at an article right now to figure out how her trip is being branded. Like, why? Uh, I mean, because I don't like. Why the fuck would this bra be doing it outside of? Uh, I, I mean, outside of the fact that this bitch just does insider trading, and <laughs> this is a fucking. This is just where chips are made. Uh, the, the super con- the chi- the chips like the chip shortage stuff that that happened before right? yeah they make semiconductors there and the chip shortage right. has been like a fucking nightmare right like that's why you can't fucking that's why you fucking car prices are going through the fucking roof right like they can't make shit dude um mm. and so yeah you know obviously taiwan is 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 quite the diamond here uh everybody wants a piece uh mm. so i mean i guess she's going over for that i don't yeah, I don't even know. I'm reading this fucking article. It doesn't even have a fucking explanation of why she would be going in the fucking first place. Well, I yeah, swear. I mean, it's, it's absurd. It's absurd. And I'm loving listening to fucking libs basically talking in support of just like escalating fucking military tension between two superpowers yeah, just in yeah. order to just contradict conservatives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're really the 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 libs are the neocons of the past. They're like the war hawks now. They're like fuck up Russia, yeah, fuck that shit up, uh, fuck China up, go go to fucking war. Yeah, uh, they that's got this the, red scare of the Ruskies. They got Russophobia and all that. That's what well, the that's Marvel the, Cinematic Universe will do to you, dude. Yeah. That's the funny yeah. thing too is like uh, is the fucking the neocons fucking support this shit also. Oh, of course uh, they do. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. That's like their new bedfellow. This mm-hmm. guy, who's this fella, Tim Scott? This like black Republican uh, is. I mean, I you know I don't see race, but you know some <laughs> might notice that. Uh, he's all he's all posting about uh, you know our one China policy, and we really support her standing up for the people of Taiwan and their independence. It's like, are you guys? Are you guys out of your fucking minds? <laughs> this is this feels like this feels like uh, the Roe v. Wade stuff ahead of the midterms is like uh, is rallying the fucking twenty seven year old HR broad vote, and this is like rallying the fucking Lincoln Project cohort vote. Oh, so, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> is this the black Republican that was shooting the Democrat KKK people? Is that him? Or this- it might be, man. I didn't. Yeah. I only heard about that ad. Oh, you never seen it? No, I never saw it, man. You need to see I, it. I think. I, I think it's a cultural it's artifact. Insane. Sometimes, sometimes I treat that shit a little bit like a lot of stuff on like libs of TikTok, where I'm just like, yeah, like I feel like I'll just be happier if I avoid watch. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I can like I can't look at it. It's pretty funny. It's 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 good cinematography and everything. But uh, <laughs> but but yeah, the I guess the, <laughs> shot by Roger Deakins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess yeah, the libs and the the neocons they've they've come home to each other. You know they're they're just you know united front on this sort of thing. And I mean again, shout out to Trump because Trump sort of the uh, kind of forced their hand on this, kind of just made that shit all out in the open. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the libs are just increasingly. You know, with Russia Gate and and uh, and everything, they're just increasingly like the old that old division of like, oh, the libs are doves. You know, they don't like the Iraq War. That that shit is gone. That shit is out the fucking window. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, it seems like yeah, the, it seems like the only ones who don't like intervention now are the right, which is fucking crazy. It's fucking mind boggling. Um, yeah, PM, P- like a inner city PMC maker. slugs are more the beneficiary be- beneficiaries of modern like. American imperialism than fucking jet ski salesmen are. Oh, yeah. dude, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is funny because they always paint it as like the chuds are benefiting from the war. So, you know, why are you against the war when you benefit from it? You should be. It's a funny argument because are they trying to say that you should be for the war? It's like, I don't I don't know what, what kind of argument they're trying to well, make. Which is funny that. because because like because, you know, to I guess in some slight way, giving them credit, like 
every, all, all of us benefit from the war in some way. I mean, we're probably paying more of a price for it than we're benefiting for uh, for a while now. Yeah. But I mean, like this argument they're making, it's like it's almost like it, it, like presupposing that they don't. And that's just hilarious. Yeah, I mean, the spoils of war, like the spoils of everything are getting more concentrated, you know, mm-hmm. so, uh, of a higher elite. So they catch the trickle down faster than the chud does. Um, but the amount that's trickling down in total is becoming less and less as things consolidate. So, you know, I, yeah, I, did, I we, of course, we definitely all benefit from it. I mean, we benefited from World War Two. I don't think we'd be here without without that. But but it's not it's not the same. It's it's the 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 flow of the the spoils of war is not it's not the same as it used to be. Um, you know, it's not like we we build like manufacturing after World War Two now from like this shit with Ukraine or shit with China. Like we don't, it's, you know, the the benefits are definitely not the same. But yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense that they'd be a uh, sort of hawkish on this and sort of like, I mean, basically the framing that they're saying is that she went there and she's sort of like fucking with China and China is basically. She called China. their bluff fucking girl boss on the world <laughs> oh, stage. God. Oh God. And China's basically like saying like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? You know, you can, we can't let this stand. You know, this is a, this is an act of aggression. We gotta, we gotta, we're gonna check you. And I don't think at this point when we're recording the, the checking hasn't happened yet. I don't think. No, I don't think it's gonna happen. But yeah, there will like be consequences. Drills. What was that? I was gonna say they're gonna do like military drills or something. You know, like not actually checking, but like a one of those Flexing. things that they just do. Yeah, like North saber Korea rattling. would be like, oh, we're taking some ships out now, and it's just nothing. You know. Yeah, saber rattling. It's like you know, it's like you know, all that shit. Just what was it like? Kim Jong Il would just like shoot off some missiles randomly, just, you know, mm-hmm. just into the ocean. Just like you saw that. Like they're just. Uh, I guess it'll just be be doing stuff like that. The usual. I don't think there'll be any World War Three. I still don't. I still don't think that way. Uh, uh, you know that that term gets thrown out a lot, but I don't. I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, no, I do remember though, like when the Ukraine stuff started popping off. Uh, most people were saying, you know, oh, now Taiwan is gonna be a hot issue as well. And it came from a different couple of different angles. One would be like, oh, well, once G sees what Putin's doing, he's gonna be emboldened to be a you know tyrannical dictator as well. Um, and then others were just like geopolitically, this just makes sense. Um, but yeah, I remember that was kind of a topic of conversation, right? When the Ukraine stuff started, they were like, all right, we'll look to Taiwan now. And uh, I guess oh, yeah. Nancy is just over here trying to make that a reality. Oh, yeah, it's true. Uh, with Alexei, when he was on, we were talking about multipolarity and mm-hmm. and the Ukraine issue would, you know, sort of open up a wedge with uh, with Taiwan. So mm-hmm. that that issue with uh, with China. Yeah, I don't know if it was like a, in a, as a response to the Ukraine thing It's like she was going over to the, there to be like, hey, you know, we're, we're not going to like, uh, you know, let some Ukraine shit go down again here. Like we're, we're out here. I'm, I'm out here. <laughs> I've got my sunglasses. I'm posted up like I don't know what, what kind <laughs> yeah, of uh, sand up. <laughs> yeah. But also, yeah, again, like Biden, not like openly in the media saying what the fuck is this bitch doing like that's kind of like that's wild it's it's, that really threw me off because they're usually kind of in sync about things because they got the same handlers but uh i don't know maybe she thinks she's going on the lolita express or something like i don't know what she was doing like i don't know why she would do that i don't even (laughs) with the chip conductor thing i don't really get like i don't get the angle that's, that's the thing that doesn't make any sense to me right is like she very obviously made some huge investments in chip companies and nvidia ahead of time ahead of uh, the chips act and uh i don't know what the fuck i don't know why the fuck you would need to go to taiwan i could invest in you know i could invest in a company i don't need to fly across the fucking world to go like you know kick the tires um <laughs> i don't i don't really get it i mean i mean i think it might really just be optics for having uh, the thing that scares me the most about it is that maybe the 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 reason genuinely just is optics for the midterms in in what in like showing strength like yeah in foreign mm-hmm. policy yeah. yeah which like which like again like like if you guys if you guys want to like if you guys if you guys want to be you know strong strong world stage actors and everything yeah i'm not super fond of that but it makes sense but like this this like i don't know libs simultaneously doing that and then being like the compassion police is is scary to me i don't know it's there's something unnerving about it 
In in what in what way? The fact that like these are like the the idea of like a mass murderers that also think that they're like caring, nurturing maternal figures almost you know what i mean (laughs) like like woke scolds that also are it's literally just that picture of like the u.s bomber with like the trans pride flag painted on it like that's horrifying that's fucking horrifying (laughs) well and at the end of the day it's the justification that they use for their support of taiwan in the first place too it's like a moral justification of oh well china's oppressing them and this that and the other (laughs) Yeah, I mean it's 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 liberal foreign policy generally. Yeah. Yeah, this chip act. Okay, I didn't I didn't know. Yeah, I remember you mentioning this. So to boost U.S. chip production, Chinese competition. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, and she's got all that insider trading shit that she keeps talking about. Uh, getting clipped on the news about like just they ask her like if her husband's insider trading, she's just like, what are you talking about? And just walks away. Uh, yeah. That 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 doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. It's very, very strange. Very strange. I mean, she's clearly like demented, so she's got dementia for sure. So <laughs> demented uh, with dementia. Yeah, yeah. She's both. So uh, I don't know. Don't know what to make of this. Godspeed I mean, to the Chinese military. Yeah, yeah. See, I always get conflicted about these things because, like, I hate China and I also hate like America. Well, I hate like uh, the Western like imperialism. So I. I'm always conflicted in moments like these because I don't know who to really who to really side with because I I don't like either of these. To me, to me, forces. they're so <laughs> obviously worse, or is it, we are so obviously worse. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, you know, again, like I said to you guys in the in the group chat, like fucking this would be this would be like if if a member of the CCP went to fucking Hawaii. And was like, hey, I just want to let everybody know on the world stage that uh, I uh, recognize you as an independent territory. And (laughs) uh, we're allies of you against. uh, And and it's like, no, like and, you know, as much as and take these missiles, as (laughs) as much as you'll hear whinging on the part of woke schools about like how bad it, you know, it is that we colonize Hawaii and everything. That shit's not changing anytime soon because nobody wants that to be a fucking satellite of China or Russia. Right. <laughs> right, right. Taiwan's in the fucking South China Sea. Dude. What the fuck are we doing over there, man? It's not right. It's fucking no, nah, man. Come on, come on. Yeah. It's 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 just, we're just so we're so uh, acclimated to us just acting absolutely like like we own the fucking world. Yeah, that we would even consider this to be like, oh yeah, no, the West is being reasonable here. No, like we're. We're fucking we're being an evil fucking empire um, mm-hmm. and you're just having you're just libs are just are just supporting this shit to just own the cons. And that's wild. Yeah, we just got to get out of there. Like We got nothing to do with Taiwan really now. Like we really we shouldn't ever have anything to do with Taiwan. Uh, let's just, you know, we should like pretty much not mess around with China's shit. I am pretty am pretty strongly like anti intervention anti like pretty kind of isolationist i'm thinking now uh yeah, as same. far as foreign policy goes because i mean what the fuck are we doing dude like we got military bases all over the goddamn world for what reason no other country does why we have this industry just to make these few fuckers money like really just essentially disrupt the like just a natural state of things disrupt other people's cultures other people's states uh really just kind of flatten out uh, a lot of society in general export our ideology, which is fucked up in the first place everywhere. Uh, it's not good. I don't really like it. What are we doing? Uh, yeah, let's get out of there. Mm-hmm. Taiwan, uh, you know, Godspeed to you too, I guess. Uh, but I mean, let's be real here. It's China shit. So, Unfortunately, though, <laughs> we have a lot to do with them just because this fucking chip shortage. So... Well, and also I mean, just like geopolitical history, but it's just like, and then the, like, if you sat down though, and you were just like, what do a hundred Americans have to do with a hundred, you know, Taiwan people? It's like fucking nothing really. I mean, I know there's a chip shortage and there's this and that, but like I'm saying in an ideal world, we wouldn't be dealing with anything to do with that over there. So like, no. really it's like, let's just kind of take a step back realistically. Um, and I know that there's material incentives otherwise that they're acting upon but yeah yeah it's interesting because her the libs and the neocons like with tbp and everything they're just their their mindset is very much about 
competition with China for 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 supremacy. And Trump, in contrast, the thing they kept drilling Trump on was like, you're not even engaging with them. You're just going to let them run train on all of us, you know, because uh, he's more like isolationist. And he's like, you know, having good relations with Kim Jong Il and Putin and Xi and all that. And, you know, of course, they're going to say, oh, he's a strong man. He's a fascist. They're all fascist. You know, they're, they they paint it that way, obviously. But uh, but the isolationist. Yeah, I, I, I totally feel that way, too. I mean, I just feel like. I, you know, just, just fucking stay out of that shit. Just, you know, we should just focus on our own shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do wonder if, if being isolated, I obviously am isolationist, but like, I do wonder if, does that mean that the more isolationist we are, the more odds are that China will just get global supremacy economically and then eventually put us under their thumb? I mean, maybe that is some. I, you know, I don't really know. I don't really know that that's in the cards for China, to be honest, because like they're (laughs) not really in that good of a way. But like, again, like, I don't know, maybe that's like something to consider when it's like a situation that isn't just like us going into a fucking like island right next to their country and be like, yeah, yeah, this isn't your again, fucking Hawaii. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. It's and and Hawaii isn't even that good of a fucking comparison because, like, we don't actually have jack shit to do with Hawaii in a just world. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Whereas China kind of has a reasonable claim to Taiwan. Um, Yeah, yeah. This is this is funny. This is a funny part of our conversations where we still kind of sound somewhat like leftist, I guess, like like critiquing American Empire and and all this. But uh, it's funny because I don't I don't know if the left is still anti-intervention because they just vote democrats so as far as their actual stance it's whatever the democrats is uh for pro-intervention and right now they're war hawks so yeah i mean the only ones i see anti-intervention is is the right uh and that's that's framed as uh what did the lips say is the anti-patriotic like mm-hmm. oh that's that's ironic you're like you're supposed to be patriots but you're against america or whatever that's that's the uh yeah, they'll be like, that's ironic that you're supposed to be a patriot uh, and love America, and, but then you're against sending $40 billion to Ukraine at a time <laughs> when Americans are in economic crisis. Right, right, yeah, because American empire and America itself are two distinct things. They used oh, to be yeah. sort of closer. That's sort of what I mean of the trickling down thing. It used to be closer tied, mm-hmm. like World War II times, but now it's become so untethered, just like everything else, that... Uh, making it an argument of like patriotism is kind of like and i don't even care about patriotism i'm not patriotic i don't care about that but it 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 is weird to call it patriotism to be like yeah send more money to those defense contractors like that it's very it sounds very weird fucking evil bro it's fucking (laughs) evil well yeah i think that's what i remember watching old clips of like the clintons talking about you know uh nafta when they were pitching it, you know, and Clinton administration people pitching it and having debates on like Charlie Rose and shit. And they were just like, you know, this will help America just increase our standing in the world. It's good for America. It's good for America. And the idea is like, hey, you're American. This is good for us. We're all part of the same thing. Mm-hmm. But really, you're not. You're, you're, that's not what they were talking about. They were talking about America, the, the empire, the elites of America, and uh, not you. So that was like a bit, it was a funny, like, misdirection of like oh you know you'll you'll benefit from this and you know years decades later here we are uh of it of it not being that way um but yeah i don't i don't know i don't know what to make of this i guess i guess it's going to develop or maybe nothing's going to happen with this but uh but yeah i mean the ukraine russia taiwan china thing is is still ongoing i guess i guess it's going to take a while for this to shake out and see what what it looks like after but uh yeah very strange i don't get it as far as the the Biden aspect of it. Um, so this other thing is the recession thing they keep talking about, uh, defining a recession. Mm-hmm. Um, so one crazy thing. So there's all this contentiousness about what is a recession. It used to be you're down two fiscal quarters. You're in a recession. Simple mm-hmm. as that, cut and dry. Uh and now it's sort of like this thing that's being debating. And I keep seeing fucking press conferences where they're asking Biden and his uh, press people like, hey, are we are we in a recession? <laughs> it's just like, you know, like hey, motherfuckers look around. Yeah, bro. bro yeah, Feel it out. Yeah, we're in a recession. Damn. Yeah. If you have to ask, you're probably 
part of why or you, you're one of the closest <laughs> beneficiaries of why we're in a recession if you don't know right now mm-hmm. uh or I, I don't even get what the why it's being talked of like are we entering a recession it's like bro we i don't know if the 2021 ever ended really like they just flooded it with money like pumping it with money and extending it uh that's not really like an end to the recession in my mind it's like you know it's like the dead cat bouncing like it's it's not really uh come back you know what i mean um but there was you you saw alexi had like posted something about the wikipedia article did you see you guys see this i don't know Uh, if i saw a wikipedia article i know that they so i know they've been playing fast and loose with the definition and then i saw that uh someone took a side by side of a definition it might have been wikipedia it might have been like i don't know some online dictionary thing um but where they they changed it to like now in the definition that says like there's no widely agreed upon definition for a recession. Yep. Uh, like that specific phrase. That's fucking crazy. Yep. But like that's what they, they like to do that with everything. They like to make everything more ambiguous, make words like stretch them out until there's no meaning, turn them around until they, they mean like the complete opposite uh, or they're just completely useless. So then every, anything can mean anything up is down. Like racism. Yeah, was- mm hmm. And yeah. also like American, like what we were just talking about, how they like to use that instead uh, to identify American imperial subjects, essentially, with the empire itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like the apparently it was like I saw from Alexi's page, like uh, the, the 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 Wikipedia had been like edited and it changed from two down to fiscal quarters, which is what it's always been. And then they changed it to what you just said, like, oh, it's ambiguous. And then they locked it. Uh, <laughs> everyone was just like, yo, what the fuck? It's like that boomer meme where you, uh, you turn the calendar and it's 1984. It's like, what the fuck? Like they just did that in front of everyone. They're just like, yeah, this is not what it means. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, they've been talking about this for a while now. It's been like two weeks I've seen of people debating, like, you know, of them covering their ass of like, we're not in a recession. We're not in a recession. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. What do, what do you guys make of this? It's a fucking joke. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I, like, to, I don't know what to say beyond just the, the basic facts of the situation. Like they're just changing the fucking, you know what this reminds me of? This is, uh, this is, um, changing testing methods for COVID-19 to mm. adjust the narrative. Mm-hmm. Um, but doing it with the, uh, the economy, um, I think they can get away with it to be totally honest with you. Oh, um, yeah. I yeah, think, I think that, I think that the people that they actually truly rely on, um, can be insulated enough and, and hooked on, uh, just a totally fucking schizoid information diet on social media to the extent that they can basically probably just live through a recession and not really click with it. I mean, I go to work and, you know, every single one of us is, you know, 15% poorer than we were last year. Mm -hmm. Um, And people are talking about fucking January 6th, man. So (laughs) it's, it's nothing, you know, it's, it's fucking nothing. Yeah. American Um, workers are in like a perpetual state of recession. Uh, and yeah. so, I mean, it's never been it's never been a time where we're not in that. Uh, even if the GDP is high or whatever the fuck that ever means, that's nothing to me. You know, my shit's still low. I still got the other shit. Well, and even like and even like 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 the perpetual state of uh, of recession. Sure. I mean, things are unmistakably worse right now than they have been recently. Oh, I mean, absolutely. And it, yeah. And, and it's and it's just like it's just like people the culture is just such a potent tool against people to just totally disassociate from reality and i think i think it's probably possible you know i think it's honestly i think there's something really apt about that uh that line from Zelensky that we talked about uh on the last episode of no, just like real. of just the like gas is nothing covid is nothing this is the re- like i I don't think that that's like a crazy, like controversial thing crazy. to say. No, that is just, I think that's just what a lot of people are now thinking and taking is just like, oh, uh, you know what? That's a reasonable stance on this whole thing. I got to put my life in perspective real quick. Like uh, I was telling y'all in text about my, like at my work, someone came up to me and starts talking. Next thing you know, they're like, you know, I'm so, so thankful for all this around here because, uh, you know, I just start thinking about, how the Ukrainians are losing everything right now and how, you know, Putin is, 
taken everything from him. basically like Hitler and all this. And, you know, it's just like it's so deeply into people's heads that they're just like it's another way to get people to accept less. Uh, and mm-hmm. think that they deserve less. Uh, and it's not right. It really isn't. Uh, it's frustrating. And people actually deserve more. What is that? Um, our boy, uh, Seneca Scott. Seneca, yeah. Yep. We, uh, what is it? We deserve better. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. That's a fact, yeah. And, you know, I mean, like you're saying of, like, the history, like, yeah, the wages were already stagnant and the cost of living was already going up before COVID. But after COVID, it's just, like, spiked. So, you know, I'm hearing about people like getting raises uh, and they're getting raises because of the inflation. But the amount that they're getting raised is less than the inflation. Mm -hmm. So it's just like it's just like, all right, you're you're effectively taking a pay cut, um, you know, and uh, and yeah. And Seneca kind of mentioned this in a way. And this is what I think, too, especially with the Ukraine thing and all the cultural things. I think people are black pilled on the economy. I think I think they're black pilled on it. And I think. I noticed this with the left a long time ago of like when they'll talk woke stuff and economic stuff. And I'll be like, you know, the woke stuff isn't really a priority, you know, and they'd be like, no, no, we can do both. And then they'll say they'll say, you know, the economic stuff like uh, what are we going to do about it anyways? If I really drill into them, they'll be like, what are we going to do about it? And I'm like, OK, so you're you you're not you say we can do both, but you don't you, you you've given up on one of them, clearly. Well, I mean, um, I think I think obviously you have to do both because you have to show that the woke shit is obviously used for cover uh, for the economic shit. No, I mean, for the leftists, they were like pro woke. They were like pro woke oh, and pro the economic okay, sorry, stuff. And sorry, I'd be sorry. like, hey, you know, you know, that woke shit isn't really this is when I was like was a, le- was a leftist and I was like more woke or whatever. I was like, you know, this woke shit isn't really the priority right now. And they'd be like, yeah, you know, we can do both. Ball. Yeah, and they'd be like, they'd be like, we can do both, which I hear from the right too nowadays. We can do both. And then they and then I'll say, and I'll then, drill about the economy <laughs> thing. And they're like, well, bro, what are we gonna do about that? And it's uh, like, best, okay. best, I, best I can do is uh signal boost a TikTok of some gender goblin <laughs> teaching classes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, best, best I can do is get up in arms about a drag show that kids went to. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, my groceries are like three times as expensive as they were. Um, yeah. but I guess these people in a city I've never even fucking heard of going to a drag show is more important. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and the left equivalent is like putting the uh, was it the black icon on their uh, Instagram for BLM yeah. or whatever. It's like well, my grandma do didn't this. do a land acknowledgement, so I fucking slit her throat. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like they'll they'll talk about doing all this stuff and how important it is, and I'll be like, "What about the economics of it?" They'll be like, "Ah, bro, it's it's fucked anyways." I'm like, "Okay." OK, I see where you're at. Like, I get it. Like, you know, you, and it's funny because that's what all these people want. That's why that Zelensky guy wrote that said that shit. It's exactly what they're trying to do. They're like, hey, stop thinking about that. Stop thinking about what's going on around you, tangibly going around you. Think about this shit in Ukraine that you're, you're not even here. You don't even know what you're, you're not. You don't even live there. Like, focus on that. Like, you know what I think a big part of it is? I think a big part of it is uh, we are like we already know. We already know that boomers like were the beneficiaries of like of 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 abundance and they pulled the ladder up behind them right um but i think yeah. that yeah. i think that millennials are kind of the opposite of the spectrum we're like do i think that just black pilling millennials and just being like whatever i'm never gonna get a house anyway so why right. why even you know why bother uh why bother planning to have kids or getting married or saving any money? I'm just going to spend it all on fucking weed and video games and Funko pops. And, and I think that like, I think that someone with that worldview is not probably going to be super animated when their fucking net worth continues to tank from out of control inflation and a recession. Yep. Um, Yep. And and it's crazy. We've talked about it a lot. I think more and more and more. I think a lot about our conversation with Bennett, where he was talking about like, you can make it work. And mm. I don't know, me and my girlfriend have been looking into things and really like, you know, crossing our T's, dotting our eyes, looking at the numbers and like, you can make it work. You can. You're not going to have as easy a time and not everybody can make it work. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like, and but I just like, you shouldn't give up hope because that. Yeah, yeah. That, oh, for sure. Hey, Slav, see what you did? Yeah, I'm here. The Black Pill Millennials heard and they cut the stream. They're like, all right, <laughs> no more of that talk, bro. We got to keep living in our darkness, swallowing <laughs> yeah. depression. Yeah. Um, oh, he's back. Oh, there he is. Hey, hey. hey fuck, breaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, running the AC. 
uh, and the microwave. The wiring oh, you're in our killing pla- the planet, bro. <laughs> uh, the wiring in our place is like fucking psychotic. So fire hazard. Yeah. Oh, so, yo, speaking of AC, I just saw on my this side of my Twitter feed uh, that Spain apparently put some law into place that you can't bring the AC below like 27 degrees Celsius. I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> in, in our, you it's know, in our temperatures, it's yeah, <laughs> Celsius is none of my business, but <laughs> but they're regulating over there. Eighty degrees Fahrenheit. Holy shit! Wait, well, you're fucking. You can't believe it. You can't bring it down below eighty degrees Fahrenheit. Nope, bro, that is fucked up. <laughs> you can't have old people dying and shit, dude. Yeah, yeah, we got to talk about that too because you brought it up uh, at the beginning of the last episode of like, well, you guys were having. Well, there's heat waves everywhere, really. Uh, but like the damage to the uh, like how the infrastructure can't can't support it. Um, yeah. What, what, what were you guys going to say about that? Oh, I was just saying mostly because, a yeah, there's been I mean, it's been hot. Um, I know Slav has been it's having been some, some heat up there, <laughs> um, but I'm we be dealing with some heat. And that's not been too crazy out of normal here. Um, but what we have been having, and other places in the Midwest specifically as well, um, have been flooding a, a lot recently. Um, like Kentucky, there's like major floods going on in Kentucky and people are dying. Uh, other peop- other places in the Midwest have been flooding. And, and so I start to think about it and what the people around me are saying in response to all of it. Because um, like, I mean, where I live, like the highway is flooded. And this is only after like an hour or so of rain, maybe a little bit less, which like, you know, I mean, an hour of heavy rain. Sure, that's a lot of rain, but you should be prepared for like an hour of heavy rain in any city. Um, So it's like I started thinking all the people around and all the articles I'm reading about these rains and stuff is, oh, historic rainfalls, historic storm fronts, um, you know, stuff about how the storms are getting stronger and the rain's getting worse and uh, climate change is really just stirring all these things up and it's causing all this damage and unprecedented stuff like we've never seen before. But then I start to think about like what specifically are the issues, uh, at least that we were encountering, like encountering where I am. And it's like a lot of it came down to just poor infrastructure, Um, infrastructure that was never maintained and it hasn't been kept up. Infrastructure that was probably built in the fucking early 1900s or maybe even some of it way before that. uh, If we're talking like sewers and stuff, maybe never been maintained correctly. And so like where I live, it's like, okay, it's a city, right? So A, there's already a lot of water displacement from just being concrete and shit everywhere. Not a lot of green spaces to soak stuff up. Uh, And so you're having a lot of water runoff and it's being redirected. Um, you know, in the more natural landscape, it just kind of like it flows more naturally. I mean, obviously there'll be mudslides or whatever if there's a lot, but usually it finds in little nooks and crannies and then it forms streams, etc. And when it gets soaked up, it figures itself out. But in the city, uh, in an urban area or a suburban area, all that water that falls on like concrete and stuff just goes rushing into the gutters and then into the sewer and a whole lot of it and into like water uh, ways and stuff and if they're not maintained and if you're living in a city where people are littering and you know shit like that's going all in it then they're going to get clogged up and it's going to not function properly or maybe they're not street sweeping right or maybe they haven't uh you know fastened on the uh, manholes or not fastened them on but they haven't like done the proper things they need to do to maintain a sewer and so what are they going to do they're going to start filling up they're going to be like water coming out of storm drains. There's going to be stuff like that. So that's going to occur. And then you're going to have other infrastructure like bridges or roadways and stuff that are not used to, uh, you know, or not built to maintain for years and years and years, just having water flow over and erosion occurring over a daily use of not being repaired. And so there's crumbling infrastructure everywhere. And then you just compound that with the fact that there's storms occurring. And I start to think, I haven't heard anyone talking about the fact that we have these old ass clogged fucking broken ass sewers here that are causing a lot of this stuff uh, that we're not routing our water correctly. We're not planning our cities right, uh, that we have infrastructure that's crumbling in the first place. And it's just exasperated in these conditions. No, what I hear instead is just, oh, these are, you know, historic rainfalls. This is insane. This is blah, blah. How could anyone ever prepare for anything like this? Well, if you're building fucking cities and shit, you should just know that like, 
there's going to be a lot of rain sometimes and you should prepare for that shit. You should have a little bit better uh, maintenance on a lot of your your waterways and how you're just routing that stuff. I don't think we, A, when we start building and expanding our cities, we didn't really do a lot of thinking with or like how we planned them and expanded. It was just kind of sprawl. Um, and I think that that leads into a lot of it. But a lot of it's just not maintaining infrastructure. Yeah, this, this reminds me of the, the Texas thing when they had that storm and like it was just like all hell broke loose. Like They were just like in dire straits, like the roads mm-hmm. and the fucking plumbing was like fucking people's water was all fucked up and frozen and shit. Um, fucking or the like pipes. Katrina, you know, Katrina yeah. is like one of the first like I think one of the first oh, yeah. things that was really attributed to climate change is like a mega storm and this and that, the other. But like or a lot of what caused the main issues and huge catastrophic damage there was the fact that the levees broke and these were levees that the army corps of engineers had uh been like kind of sketchily maintaining um and not putting up to date reports on etc and so i mean and also it's fucking below sea level so like i don't know it's just like these things are i think it runs cover we were talking about how like the climate change narrative kind of abstracts the whole thing um but i think this is infrastructure problems is one of the main things that it runs cover for um, as well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, in New York, too, like the fucking trains are fucking ancient. And, like sometimes they fall off the tracks. Oh, yeah. People have to walk on the tracks or it rains hard. And people are like, there's videos of people like swimming out of the fucking subway station. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, what was that point that Slava made before? Like the Cali fires, like there's using cheap shrubbery mm-hmm. that uh, is prone to fires. And look, I mean, you know, the earth warming, right, is probably a real thing. Now, to a cataclysmic degree, I don't believe that. But to whatever degree it is warming, that is going to increase the amount or severity of storms. That's just going to happen. I understand that. But, uh, you know, but again, this is this is that give and take. This is that nuance thing of the COVID thing, too. It's like, yes, some people died of COVID, but also you have such a dog shit healthcare system. You have such a dog shit like, uh, 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 you know, uh, sense of health in our food in the country and like exercise and everything and drugs and everything. Uh, yeah, no wonder that like a fucking bad flu could fucking, you know, wipe a lot of people out. And then Mm -hmm. you classify it all as, Oh, they died of COVID. You know what I mean? Like you get hit by a car with COVID and they say you died of COVID. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, and I really do believe this, that the recession happened and people die from recessions. People die from economic downturns and poverty. People die from that shit. So it makes perfect sense. The, The darkest thing I think of is like that whole thing was going on and they just, shuffled all those numbers over to covid instead of just saying oh yeah people died because we fucked up and the economy got fucked up um and of course you know panicking people and they run to the hospital and they create bottlenecks and and people who can get care don't get it because somebody's there freaking out thinking they're gonna die when they're not uh of a flu uh you know all that stuff and and it's the same thing with this climate stuff like we're talking about the bridges in pittsburgh like a a bridge collapses in pittsburgh Mm -hmm. before biden shows up or people scared to drive over fucking bridges like you know is that because of fucking climate change like (laughs) like of course not um yeah it just becomes like a catch-all to to blame things uh where it's like bro maybe you should just fucking fix your fucking infrastructure like yeah uh our infrastructure is dog shit it's obviously dog shit uh, and, and, you know, as climate worsens and obviously exposes those holes in our system, they can get away with just saying it was all climate change. It's like, well, mm-hmm. it's not, it's partially that, but it's, what about all this, this fucking holes in our system? And they're going to say the, re, the, the solution will be, uh, paper straws, yes. use a paper straw and, and, uh, uh, turn your AC to 80 degrees and stop consuming things and get in the pod and get yeah, in the get super an electric, favela. Get an electric car, you know, give uh, Tesla and Elon Musk all your money. Yeah. It's just so frustrating. It's like this infrastructure is crumbling fucking everywhere. And, you know, you're taking all of my, like you're taking so much money in taxes from me every year from all of us. We are spending it on nothing useful for me. We're sending $40 billion to fucking Ukraine. We're just fucking doing... All sorts of shit that has nothing to do with just actually maintaining everyday people's lives. Like, at least just keeping the cities that we live in just livable. Just kind of keeping them at least together and going. That's like the bare minimum and they can't even do it. They won't fix their roads in your area. They won't unclog your sewers in your area. They won't fucking fix the bridges in the area. They don't give a goddamn about us, dude. And it's so fucking, like... 
Man, it's frustrating. Yeah. Fix the fucking potholes. You know, I just remembered a a fucking Alex Jones clip where he was like really young reporter and he's like talking about the potholes in the city. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's just funny that that was like a a pipeline to to be him like realizing about the the reptile latest latest (laughs) alt-right craze caring about infrastructure (laughs) yeah Yeah. he he went down that pipeline to from potholes to hating the reptile elites and all that you know it's it makes perfect sense because it's like wait why why isn't these things why aren't they being fixed i I Mm -hmm. pay the fucking government what what the fuck are they doing with it and then you find out then you do some digging and find out what they're spending the money on (laughs) but it's like uh you know like boeing planes fucking crashing and then, you know, they're doing autopsies on like what happened, you know, and then you find out they fucking skimped on some costs because yeah. it saved some fucking money to to get like a cheaper fucking bolt and whatever fucking part. Uh, and they're cutting corners. I mean, that's how a lot of this infrastructure shit is, I'd imagine, is, you know, uh, you know there's buildings and there's some development deals and uh, some public funding and partnerships and people put money in and a lot of money goes in. It's like a big laundering scheme. And construction will take 10 fucking years. We'll be like, damn, you're still building? What, what, what the fuck is going on? Is anyone actually building oh these make God, work jobs dude. like Sopranos make work jobs? Everywhere. And that, yeah. And all that money is just slush fund money. And it's like going going to these guys for their, for their you know, their yacht fund, their yacht trips and all that. And uh, they're cutting corners on the, on the costs. And then something goes wrong, you know, later on. And you wonder why, you know, and then they can, yeah, yeah, they can blame this on climate change. Uh, we, we, what we were talking about Prudentialists with the wheat crisis in Ukraine, you can blame the fucking food, food crises on climate change. It's perfect. It's fucking perfect. It's like it, it, it might be a better version of COVID, even though it's older and it's been around longer and been less potent than COVID. It might really be a better version because it's way more global, covers way more issues um and, it, and it'll last longer for sure mm-hmm. uh it has lasted longer um but yeah yeah i mean that's yeah it's one it, of those things that you can just kind of keep pointing to any random thing that happens and being like oh yeah that's that's an example of climate change there yeah. um which is like covid you can do that like you were saying with the comorbidities but uh, that's kind of the extent of it you know yeah yeah exactly exactly and i was just it's funny i was just watching you know bill burr has like a new stand-up mm-hmm mm-hmm uh, do you guys see it? Yeah, I saw that. Did you see that part where he's talking about climate change? No. Well, you saying you saying I saw some it, but shit. I don't know. I don't know what he was saying. He was kind of trying to take like a both sides thing on the COVID thing. Oh uh, yeah, I definitely and the saw abortion that thing. Yeah, the abortion thing. I saw. He was like, he was like, yeah, like how could you, uh, how could you think that a baby's not a life? Uh, basically, is like what he's saying, and then he's like. Well, yeah, I'm pretty much for that because, like, yeah, we need to kill people because it does some Malthusian bullshit. And you're like, dude, yeah, get this out said, of here. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. He said there's too many people. Uh, we're, we're, that's why we have climate change. Yeah, shit. And yeah, yeah, that's what he was. Fuck. That's what, yeah. The first thing that made me feel weird was when he, he talked about the uh, vaccine stuff and the COVID stuff. And he's yeah, like, dude. only Hicks are against this. And I'm like, huh? Hey man, <laughs> I'm a I'm a black atheist from from the city from an urban area. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a fucking hick. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, he, he just did some stupid voice or whatever. Like yeah, that that rubbed me wrong. But I mean, it's a mainstream comedian. What do you expect? And then um, you know, but yeah, that that line about the abortion thing, uh, I was just like, damn, you know, it's like you've That's seen true. it online, but I'd never. It was weird seeing it on a stage. Yeah, and like mm-hmm. people laughing, and I was like, whoa, it was like, oh, this is like a. That's it's like kinda, a thing. That's kind of a bit of his, though. He's made like a thing where he was talking about, this was like a, a while ago, where he was talking about if he was president, like he uh, he would basically just get rid of a lot of people. He was like, <laughs> he's like, no one wants to say the hard truths that like 70% of us have to go. And then makes this whole thing about climate change and goes on this whole mouth and bullshit. And it's just like, dude, get fucked, bro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. It makes me kind of appreciate the moral hazard and slippery slope of abortion a little bit, to be honest. Um, just being like, yeah, it's a person. Yeah, we should just people people should die. Um, I mean, that's like kind of an honest take. It's a little bit more in my mind. It's infinitely more honest. Oh, it's the most honest than people thing. being like clump of cells, bro, clump of cells. Um, and so, honestly, that whole bit seems like a really good uh, piece of like pro life propaganda. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, in my mind, I, I think of it as like poverty situations or bad situations where it, it it nets out to it's it's not a good situation for the kid. But like, but yeah, for for 
for him to just be like, oh, you know, the kid itself is perpetuating climate change disaster. That's like what? What is it? That picture we had before of like for one of our episodes with with, with the with, with Ghost. I think it was like of like uh, the white family with like nine kids and they're like, oh, this yeah. is this is genocide. This is a uh, <laughs> this is this is destroying the planet or I forget what they called it, like an act of genocide or something. Um, yeah, I don't understand that. I don't I don't understand the idea of like one human. Right? It's like that that thing we said last episode of like, oh, one day without electricity saves one Ukrainian life. It's like, <laughs> what? Right. Oh, what are you talking about, bro? Like, are you stupid? Like, yeah, one yeah. human off the planet equals three more days, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 like yeah, there's some very strange like calculus there like uh I I yeah. It it was weird seeing that. I mean, it was it was it was a little strange. I mean, obviously it's comedy, so it's like can't really take it serious. But yeah, and that's kind of his bit. It's just like he's just an asshole. It's just right, like, right, fuck, right. Dude? That's his shtick. His shtick is to be like a a white asshole, but he's not. He's not. He's not not woke. You know. He's, yeah. He's woke enough to yeah, let it slide. He's woke enough, but like he's like I'm the kind of guy that just says like shit that's edgy because like that's my bit, and uh, I get a kick out of making people mad. Yeah. Um, and that's just whatever, dude. I mean, motherfuckers on SNL all the fucking yeah. time. Like, I'm not expecting shit from him. Yeah, yeah. No, of course not. That was a yeah. funny way. Yeah, I don't really like. I used to like watch him a good bit. I like him, but I saw him on fucking. Uh, what was it? I saw him talking to Theo Vaughn, who uh, is a comedian who I actually do enjoy because he's like just earnest and sincere, actually. Um, which is not something that you really find in a comedian often. Um, mm-hmm. But like he was talking to Bill Burr, who was like one of his like idols on his podcast. And Bill Burr is just like an asshole to him the whole fucking time. And it's almost like being an asshole to like a kid at a candy shop or something. It's just like not, it didn't feel right. And you're like, dude, what are you doing here? Um, and they, yeah. so that's like just epitomizes like what his whole thing is. And so is it surprising yeah. that an asshole takes the mindset of Malthusianism? No. Is it actually, actually, very telling about the whole ideology yeah kind of because he's popping from that like that philly rant where he just roasts the whole crowd and like that's his shtick is like yeah i'm i'm a boston asshole mm-hmm. and uh yeah he, he 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 somehow weaved in like yeah i'm pro-abortion but uh to insert an edgy joke i'm i'm also you know uh his reasoning is we need to kill people because of climate change. Like he snuck in two woke things and kind of made <laughs> yeah, it like yeah. half edgy. Like it's like working backwards from like, all right, what's safe? What can I say that's safe? Yeah. And then, Hey Bill, we should, uh, uh, if your, if your wife gets pregnant, we should immediately abort the kid. Yeah. No, I was about to say that dude, this motherfucker has, has two kids. Yeah. yeah. He's got two yeah. kids. Yeah. I'm like, dude, yeah. what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, they gotta go. They gotta go. You're wealthy. They're going to have a bigger carbon uh, footprint than most people. <laughs> so, uh, we can retroactively abort them, bud. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. always does that kind of edgy shit. And like, does like the woke thing to kind of like back it up and be like, still okay. Or he'll be like, Oh, it's okay. I got a black wife. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. You know, you're like, dude, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Yeah. That is wild that he's got a big part of the segment where he's talking about his kids and like talking about we need to get rid of get rid of people it's like yeah wait, it's wait, not wait. him it's not him and his people yeah, it's just yeah. for us he just wants to you know get rid of the you know the people he wants to get rid of the low lives get rid of raff yeah All right, that was part one of our episode. If you'd like to listen to part two, you can find that at patreon.com slash fedpost. Thanks for listening.